If you find yourself working with a multiple clips or making multiple cuts and you need to update the color on those clips, but you don't wanna go through the process of copying the looks onto every single piece of footage, I'm gonna show you exactly how you can solve this issue really quick in DaVinci Resolve. Here I am in the color page. I'm going to just make a couple of just crazy weird color adjustments. How I would normally go about this is if I want this clip to look like this clip, I'll just select this clip and then right click on the clip I wanna copy and hit apply grade. And then boom, it copied everything over that same node. Now that works and it's great, but when you get to the point of cutting your clips and then making some adjustments along the way, it can kind of be a hassle to go back through and make sure you've copied everything together, especially if you're making little minute changes within your nodes. So to fix that, you want to assign your clips to groups. Let's just say that this little gimbal shot, I want it to be its own group. So I'm gonna right click it, add into a new group. I'm going to title this A-roll, just to say maybe it's our A-roll. But I have multiple B-roll shots, so I'm gonna select all of these, right click, add into a new group. We'll just title it B-roll. And you'll notice that they have these little links. When I select one that's connected to multiple, all of them have the links and this one is only linked to itself. To be able to know where we have it, right click and you can go to groups. So it's checked under B-roll, so we know it's there. You can also rename it if you wanted to, delete it. Um, you could also add or assign it to the new group of like A-roll. And that's a great thing to know if you're bringing in new clips and you just want them to go ahead and apply the color that's been going on within that particular group. If we were to start coloring this, uh, let's just say we'll start with curves. And I know this looks horrible. I'm gonna add a new node. Let's color warper, let's take this pink and saturate the heck out of it. We we'll go over to our other clips and nothing's happened. You can even see the little rainbow icon that indicates that something has been colored that it doesn't apply to these. What we need to do is make sure that we're coloring in the actual group. I'm going to reset that and come up here above the node where it says clip, hit that drop down, and then we'll go to group post clip. Now your node is going to be highlighted in this little lime greenish yellow color, which would match the link icon at the bottom. That way you know that you are working within the group. Now I can go through and let's just do something kind of similar. Just add two nodes. There we go. And you can already see that it has been affecting the thumbnails down here of the other clips within that group. Pop over to them and there they are, the post clip. It has them edited. Great thing to know, you can still edit that individual clip if you want it to keep the current grade. Perhaps it's from an interior shot with multiple angles, but one of them, it just has a harsh light hitting and you need to fix that up. Then you can edit within that same clip but keep the grade of the overall scene the same. And to do that, just go right back up to the drop down and select clip. Now we can go through here and grade that. And we can go back and notice that it didn't change. It didn't apply that clip grade to the other videos. And with our little single clip guy here, we'll go over, make sure we're on our post clip and just just to edit him slightly and go back to our edit tab and we can just start making some cuts, move it around or whatever. We'll go back into our color tab. We can see that it has added those with the color on it, which would work like normal if you had started coloring before you started splicing. But now we can go back in here and fix our color and it's going to apply to everything else in that group. So before this, I would use a more convoluted way of just making nested clips or making compound clips that I would then cut from. So if I needed to adjust any color, I would just go back into that compounded clip and edit the color within there and then hop back over to the timeline that I was working in and then continue on editing. 
but now that I know how to do this, it's going to make coloring so much more easier, so much faster, and honestly more enjoyable. And I know it's going to help you as well.